Hi, this is Chris Smith with Clarksville Now. I've got um, two guests with me today who are running for the Republican nomination for Montgomery County Mayor, uh, Wes Golden and Wallace Red. Thanks, gentlemen, for joining us today. And, um, yeah, and um, so let's start by telling us a little bit about yourself, Wes. Um, why don't you go ahead first? Sure, absolutely. Well, I live here in Montgomery County with my beautiful wife, uh, Sarah. She's over here in the room as well uh, with our three children that were raised here, very lively children. And it requires a lot of our time, and I couldn't do what I'm doing right now without my wife Sarah over there. I'm very grateful for her. It's probably harder on her a lot of days than it is on me trying to deal with the family and everything else. But uh, I'm from here, been here my whole life, been a lifelong Republican. My dad was a Republican, and my dad, you know, he was, a, I was raised by a single parent, my dad, and he was a lineman here for 34 years. And uh, he volunteered all over town and everything else. And he taught me how to be a servant. And that's what I've been doing my whole life, serving in Bikers Who Care, Dream Factory, um, YMCA. I was a chairman of the board over there, uh, soccer coach, all that kind of stuff too, you know. Mm -hmm. And a uh, little work experience was been in public safety, 15 years of management, both in the public sector and the private sector. And um, we're just blessed to be here. We're running on responsible growth, mm -hmm. focusing on our children, infrastructure, and public safety. All right. uh, Mr. Red, um, tell us about yourself. Thank you, Chris. Let me say thank you to you and mm -hmm. Clarksville now and to all the viewers that will be watching at home by internet uh, on your website there. I really appreciate you taking the time to let us sit down here and and give our viewpoints on things. A little about myself, I grew up in a small town, Wartrace, Tennessee, which was actually the capital first of the walking horse celebration that started there. Wartrace at that time had about 450 people. Uh, my parents were school teachers and uh, they were apolitical. They didn't care too much about politics. They'd vote, they were the type that go vote once a year. They'd go in and vote for president turn around, walk out, the down ballot didn't make that much difference to them. And uh, um, once they were so apolitical, once somebody asked my dad, said, Mr. Red, why don't you run for office? And he said, it's because I'm afraid I would win. And uh, But now, I don't have that phobia, so you can go ahead and vote for me. I didn't inherit that. As a teenager, I moved to Lewisburg, Tennessee. We moved there. My dad taught school close by, and... Uh, I was a teenager, a little bit rebellious. I didn't like people telling me how to cut my hair, how to dress. I didn't like people giving me orders. So I joined the Army. Just one of those things I didn't think through. But I ended up in the 2nd of the 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment in West Germany, helped guard the East-West German border in a support platoon. And I met the most wonderful woman in the world there. My wife, Helga, 42 years. We've had three children. Now we have five grandchildren in Birmingham, Alabama, and I've worked the best I could over the years for a limited government. I joined up with the Young Republicans and the Republican Party here. I started their Young Republicans, helped people like Carol Rice get elected to office. I've been the parliamentarian for the Republican Party here for the last eight years, and uh, that's kind of the story of where I am now. Thank you. Right. Um, so let's talk about some of the um... Uh, schools issue or some of the issues um, that are going to probably come up in the mayor's race and then come up for the next you know, four years um, in the mayor's office. Um, one of the big ones, of course, is schools. Um, so schools. Um, school construction has been delayed in recent years, um, hasn't been keeping up with the population growth, which has resulted in overcrowded schools with many students um, having to learn in portable classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, what would you do to get Montgomery County back on track with a responsible school construction schedule? And we'll start with you, Wes. Well, <clears throat> here recently I've had the opportunity to go through leadership Clarksville Montgomery County school system. Mm -hmm. And it was a good opportunity for me to learn a lot more about our school system. And we're blessed with so many good school teachers and staff over there. They're doing a good job. But right now, our school system's growing by 670 students a year right now. One of the crazy statistics that I heard when I was in that program, they said, we have 415 cities in the state of Tennessee. Our school system's bigger than 400 of those cities. That's intense. 
and it's a lot to manage, right? And you know, during this growth, we need to evaluate how we're constructing schools and designing schools as well. We need to look at how we should go up higher, and we should also look at as we build these investments that we can expand upon these investments and be better stewards of one of our most valuable resources, which is our land. Right now, we're currently building schools, and then shortly thereafter, we're putting these trailer parks around them, compromising the safety and security of our children by doing so. So we really need to look at how we're designing and building these schools. Okay. Um, one question about that, those um, school officials, when people talk about we should build two-story schools, they say that that increases the cost of the schools by about 20% because of stairwells and elevators and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, how would you um, handle that objection or do, do you think it's worth the, the price because it you know, reduces the, the footprint? Well, I think we should look at the design and the size of the school itself, mm -hmm. maybe housing more students mm -hmm. in, the, in the school instead of building these multi-million dollar, $60 million campuses Maybe we need to build bigger schools to hold more kids instead of taking up all this land as well. Because yeah. it's only going to go up in value. It's getting harder and harder to find. Mm -hmm. I don't think I think it's going to be very difficult to try to find those large campuses in the future. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, what would you say? I would say priority. Whatever you prioritize. <clears throat> um, for instance, we're going to have three in the multi-purpose event center too, and then we've got the other ice skating rink. We've got three ice skating rinks that we're going to have in Clarksville, Tennessee. And uh, I don't know how many ice skaters we have. Maybe we have a whole lot of ice skaters, but that's not on my priority as a top priority. Education should have been a top priority uh, years ago. Now, the Clarksville Montgomery County School System has a 20-year plan on the building of uh, uh, the new schools, the seven or eight, I think, that is that is in place. And what we need to start doing is budgeting now for that. Um, you can build up, and that could help in, to some extent, but you have to remember over the last 10 years, we had a 20 uh, to 21% increase in population here in Montgomery County. All of Middle Tennessee has had a, a huge increase, in large part because people just don't want to live in some of these other places. That's why they're moving here, and we just need to focus on it with a comprehensive plan. Yeah. So um, you talked um, about you know the spending on the arena and other things like that. Um, a lot of people, you know, you, you've called it unnecessary spending. A lot of people, um, well, not a lot of people, but the economic um, developers um, argue that that's sort of an investment in the community. That helps bring better jobs, higher paying jobs, more tax revenue. What's your response? To well, that? if it if it were, Chris, it would have worked in the uh, uh, vast other places where where these type sports arenas are put there by the government, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, the estimates that they put on there does not do that. You have to remember that we're taking now uh, uh, the hotel motel tax is going to be there to pay for this arena. It's also the pilot money from the IDB, and those funds could have been used for our school system. But um, the school board and the school system, they will make the plan of the schools that we're going to have to need in the future. And I'll just say this. We need to plan now and start to budget it now in advance first before uh, uh, we're always trying to do the catch-up, not just on the schools. It's also on the infrastructure. And if you want an amenity, look, I'm for not just one event center, I'm for two or three. If the private sector will put it there, if the private sector builds it, then it becomes a tax revenue source because of the improvement of the lot, and the building that's coming in, the sales tax and everything. But currently, it's going to be a liability on us, and it's the the, what the uh, experts say that it's going to create this economic impact, it's really just money that is being churned. That is, people only have a certain amount of money that they can spend for entertainment. Let's say it's $100 a month. If they go to the event center, they spend the $100 a month. If they didn't go to the event center, it just means that somewhere else they would have spent it here in Clarksville. 
at a restaurant or some other amenity. It does not create wealth. And I know that that uh, uh, Joe Biden, President Biden, tried to say this before. We have to, uh, prosperity comes from a lot of debt. We have to spend ourselves into prosperity. That does not work in any circumstance uh, as far as I'm, I believe. <clears throat> Right, well, staying with the um, with the arena, um, the F and Bank Arena. It's from construction downtown. It's mm -hmm. getting close to being, but we physically finished, and then the build out inside is is underway. It's supposed to open in um, July 2023. So this was a Montgomery County project. Um, what would you do to ensure the project's completion is and success, since this would be opening, um, you know, during you know one of your administrations? Um, let's start with this. This is, you know, I've said in other speeches, this is something that I do wish that the city would have taken on just because they also have control of the downtown parking and things like that as well, the tie into these types of things. But the county does benefit from investments downtown as well. You know, if you look at our, our taxes, people in the downtown area, 25% of their taxes are going to the city, but 75% of them are going to the county. So as something like this grows, we need to make sure that it's going to be successful. Because if it's not, the burden of paying it off is going to be on the taxpayers. And we're seeing some things downtown right now that we haven't seen in a long time. Every one of the storefronts are all full. It's been a long time since we've seen anything like that. Yeah. And other people are investing downtown. Uh, Cunningham's are redoing the federal building to open up a new restaurant there. The Maynards are opening up the Shelby's Trio over there, building a brand new building. And that's a sizable investment on a small parcel. So the city and the county both benefit from those types of investments. So I'm excited to see what else is gonna come down here. All right, Mr. Ed? Well, Chris, I, let me say this first. First off, if a lot of tax and spending was the answer, we wouldn't have such a population growth that we have here in Clarksville for people that are, are moving here from high tax and high spending areas. And I guess it goes back to the old debate of what is the role of government. Mm -hmm. Some people believe that the role of government is to take care of everything, to take care of your children from, and to take care of all your needs from cradle to grave for your entertainment and that sort of thing. But it's not. Um, again, you know, I believe that this is something that should be put there by the private sector. I believe that a, a good test would have been if this would have gone on the ballot to, to see if the people are on board. It would, we, we had a, an election that was coming up, you know, within three or four months, it could have went on the ballot. Then everyone would have known uh, with the, how the people really felt. You didn't have to take some kind of survey. As far as I know, I don't think there was a survey to find out what the people thought about it. But getting back to your question too is, how are you going to provide for this? Having said all this, I'm going to do the best I can to make sure that this is a success. Although I didn't vote for it, I didn't place it there, I didn't eat the soup, but I'm going to have to eat it. And I'm going to do what I can to make sure it is, it is a success for our county and for our city. I've decided to do the best I can to get an attorney, a current attorney or maybe a retired attorney, to go over the documents and the contracts that's already been signed. And, uh, and I do think that I would not have been for the city building such a project, but the city was much more equipped with it. But then you had uh, the, uh, uh, and I believe that that time Mayor Kim McMillan was looking at this as well, but then you had kind of the conflict between the two mayors at that time, and they couldn't come up with an agreement. So the county just said, well, what the heck? Let's just go ahead and do it. Although they're not over the parking, they have one part-time attorney, the county does, to, to sift through the contracts where the city has a whole staff, and they, uh, the county mayor is not over the sheriff's department or the police department there. That's its own constitutionally elected office. And so who's going to manage the traffic? Who's going to manage the parking? The location is problematic, I believe. And I believe a lot of people have thought about that before. And you have to remember it was that referendum before. 
and it wasn't vote, voted down by a little bit. I think if, if uh, unless my memory serves me right, I think it was like about a 70-30 when it was voted down last time. But that's my thought on that. Just wave your pencil if I go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the issues that's come up both with the, um, with the arena and with the um, school construction is, um, is growth. Um, we're continuing to see massive growth in all of Middle Tennessee, but also Montgomery County. Um, it raises concerns about infill, um, but on the other side raises concerns about loss of farmland and sprawl. Um, so what's your vision for the best way for Montgomery County to grow, and what would you do to help manage that growth? Um, I'll start with this time. Well, Ross. again, you know, we, we uh, have a large amount of growth because people want to live here. They live in, let's just face it, they're, they're deplorable cities across the nation, and people are taxed to death in those places, so they're moving here. And that's uh, uh, the reason that they come here, too, is because we are a, a low-tax state. The state legislature and uh, by constitution, state constitution, we have uh, no income tax. But we have to, again, look ahead with the growth that's going to be coming. We have a projected growth now that is going to be uh, about the same over the uh, next 10 years, the next decade, that we had in the last decade. So we have to start looking at our resources to work on that. The city's come up with the 2020 transportation plan, and uh, uh, which, although it's called transportation plan, it's mostly about roads and infrastructure. Um, the growth, you can't stop people from moving here, but you can make your infrastructure you can start working on the schools now for that time uh, over the next 10 years whenever we have another 20% increase in population. Um, and you talked about, um, uh, you know, need, the county should maybe have, you know, a similar infrastructure plan to what the city is doing, um, at least an approach. Are there certain county roads that you would that you think need to be improved or need to be addressed, or certain areas of the county that need that kind of infrastructure? Well, on the 2020 plan, um, you have your state and county and local roads. Um, we have uh, 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 roads in basically everywhere in the county that needs to be widened, that come off of 79 Dover Road. And I'll just use this one as, a, as an example. It's They need to have more, they need to be wider where they have the shoulder, the soft shoulder. That they're very dangerous. And some things I think can be implemented now that is, uh, um, and I know that the, the highway department has a tier program and they are working on that where they kind of mow on the side and everything, but they need to take a look at the speed limits of the, the roads that we have here in Clarksville. One of the biggest complaints that we get county and city is the speeders in neighborhoods and Speeders like on Lyle Wood Road and some others like that, it is very dangerous. And that's something we can do at a low cost to do it now. But uh, the 2020 transportation plan we have, it encompasses as well county roads. All right. Um, what you say about that? Uh, what's the, um, um, the growth and how to manage it? <clears throat> well, I think we need to start looking at incentivizing the city to start growing up instead of out so much. You know, right now we're losing valuable agricultural land and things like that. When there's plenty of land inside the city limits, we have a hundred square miles inside that city limits. There's plenty of room for them to grow and build on infrastructure that we already own. And some of that in infrastructure needs to be worked on as well, both to alleviate traffic problems, water pressure, or fire protection, and all that type of stuff as well. You know. <clears throat> The last comprehensive plan that was done by a regional planning commission was done in 1999. It's been updated several times since then, but we've severely outgrown that plan. And I'm grateful now that they're working on a new plan. And I encourage anybody and everybody to go onto their website and fill out their survey to give them your input as well. Um, and you talked in your um, written responses about um, uh, incentivizing um, growth inside the city um, and, and disincentivizing, I guess, sprawl. What, 
What would that look like? Um, incentives? Are you talking about like um, tax incentives or, or, or fees for growing yeah. outside? So you, could do, you could do tax incentives and things like that. And also working with organizations like HUD and you know, folks like that to, to try to get more investors to do that type of work inside the city limits. And maybe even look at the way that we do zoning. zoning. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I drove by some buildings today. I think they're building over on Greenwood and I see 10 foot in between each house. That's just a waste of land right there. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we need to look at zero lot lines in some areas and putting the right engineering, the right things in place to make sure that we have the adequate firewalls and things like that to protect our people. You know, we've had situations in town where 10 houses were close enough together that all 10 of them caught on fire. All right. Um, so you talked some, um, Wes, about a juvenile detention center and some other issues that need to be addressed. Can you expound on that? Or sure. Um, what you like to see there? You know, it's hard to talk about Montgomery County at all without talking about public safety. You know, we're, we're blessed with so many women and men that serve our community, EMS, Sheriff's Department, um, fire department and when you look at the fire department <clears throat> every fire department has a section called fire prevention because prevention is where it's at and with fire, between fire and prevention and building codes we've seen the number of fires that we have go down we need to look at law enforcement the same way and that's how I feel about this juvenile resource center you know we've had we have great programs here right now like the veterans treatment court where we've seen fail rates go from 78% to 4%. That's a return on investment. And that's investing in our veterans, it's investing in our community. And we need to take the same love that we're giving those people and give it to our children that we have in this community. So the Juvenile Resource Center, we don't have one. We're paying to send our police officers to other counties. We're paying those other counties to house our children and then we don't have the programs that go along with it. And a lot of the kids that are in these situations come from some sort of broken relationship. And some of them have never even seen what a good relationship is supposed to look like. So we can put the right mentorship programs in place and things like that to show them what a real relationship is supposed to look like, how to become a better citizen, and how to become a servant for this community. Okay. Um, what about you all? Some of the this has come up before the juvenile resource center. What's been your take on that? Well, first let me say it's just sad that we live in a time that we have to talk about juveniles and being detained in a detention facility, and it's because I believe over the year, you know, we have gotten away in our country from traditional values that we held dear for so long. And a lot of it, quite frankly, has been taken out of the public school system because of the objections of people. And now it's you, you can't even talk about some of the, the things of our forefathers uh, because people are so afraid that, that they get offended. And it's just sad that we live in a time when we are now talking about juvenile detention centers. And, and it's quite frankly in the families, it's in our churches, everywhere. And uh, this is something that, that we've needed for the last 20 years, but of course it's sad. It's a sad testimony. And I think uh, uh, the Sheriff's Department, the savings, once I was on the Legislative Liaison Committee, and this was an item, and as a county mayor, I will be on that committee and I will bring this to our state legislative represent representatives <clears throat> Uh, Curtis Johnson and uh, Bill Powers, our senator there, to see if if they if there is some grants that can be had so we can to help offset offset the cost there. And of course, you know it's a big cost. It doesn't seem like it is, but transporting juveniles to Columbia, Tennessee, is is a big cost to do that. Uh, uh, inmates at at any age group is is one of the biggest costs that we have and uh, I'm going to work with the Sheriff's Department and see what we can do about grants and, and getting something finished there that should have been done 20 years ago. All right. Um, in your um, in your response, um, whilst to the other issues, um, you mentioned about um, city, uh, the county getting involved in, in what should be city projects. Um, can you expound on that some? 
Well, I guess whenever I was speaking of that, I was just giving an example. There, and let me say this, Chris. There's no magic line somewhere that says that, that, and I know that the city is in the county. You know, people say, use that phrase a lot. And I know there's no line that says, and there's no law that says the county cannot do something in the city. And, and the city can't put parks or so in the county. I know that. Traditionally, until the multi-purpose event centers come along, that's the way it's always been, though. And, and I think the citizens that live in the county, they look at the county government as taking care of the parks in the county because the roads of the supervisor, of the highway supervisor that we have, he takes care of the roads in the county and the street department with the city takes care of them in the city. But for some reason, the county government decided to put up a multi-purpose event center when it's not really uh, uh, the best uh, governmental body to have done that. That doesn't mean I would have been for it for the city doing it, uh, especially in the location that it's been and just why uh, they wanted to go ahead and do that first. Um, but at one of our council meetings, you know, I asked the mayor, um, do you have any plans or do we have any plans perhaps to take over the event? And this was whenever we were debating about uh, the parking downtown. I said, do we have any plans on taking over the event center? And he emphatically uh, made the uh, facial expression and the voice expression, no, like that. So that tells me there too that uh, uh, maybe it's something that they want to say that uh, uh, they're happy that the county put it there, but I don't think that he's going to be amenable to, to doing anything more on that area with the event center. So, Wes, um, you had mentioned that you know you felt like that that should have been the city project. Um, how does that play out? Like you, you talk about some of the growth that's happening downtown. What what responsibility does the county have for things that happen inside the city limits? What's your um, sort of philosophy on that? Well, like I said before, too, the county gets more benefit off of that tax revenue than the city does when those investments are made downtown. And that's not just a downtown area. If you look at Exit One. You know, there was a, a movie theater built out there, and then all of a sudden, we have all these businesses pop up around it, right? Um, out by exit 11 on St. B, when Jay Crozier uh, brought that into the city limits, a mall came in out there, and things built around it. You know, so both the city and the county both benefit from that. The county benefits three times as much from the tax revenue. All right. Well, gentlemen, those were the main questions I had. Um, I'll just give you a chance to close to say anything else that you want. To, any other issues that you want to bring up, or just um, any closing points that you want to? Make? Yeah. I would just like to say, you know, I'm not. Uh, I'm okay with movie theaters mm -hmm. and and malls being built, but those are private sector thing. I'm all for those. And and like I said before, the Churchill Downs that put their uh, hotel there in Oak Grove, Kentucky. I'm all for that whenever the private sector puts it there. And I, and I think, and as mayor, I'm going to do what I can uh, whenever there is a need for, for event centers or convention centers. I'm going to look at trying to recruit that to be put in here from the private sector, also managed by the private sector, so they will have the cost and the liability. And uh, um, because that's, uh, it will become a revenue source for uh, a tax revenue source rather than a tax liability by taking off the tax rolls. Right. And Wes? Is this my final closing? Yeah, final closing. Final final closing. closing. <laughs> All right. Well, of a better Montgomery County. I'm looking for something where Montgomery County can be somewhere where it's easy to conduct business and start a new business. Where our kids can thrive learn and start businesses themselves one day you know I, I look at every decision that we have to make and i'm going to ask the question is this what's best for everybody and is it fiscally responsible 
And if it's yes to those two things, then it's something we should be looking at. If not, it's not something we should be looking at. I'm not going to make decisions on what's going to get West Golden reelected. But if we look at what's best for all, put our faith and trust in God, everything else will work out. My name is Wes Golden, and I appreciate your vote. Did you have any closing? Well, yes, sir, if it's okay. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know my response to this other. Um, I'm running for mayor because I believe it's time for change. And I'm a conservative Republican and have been for a long time. And I explained that in my opening. I believe it's time that we invest in our schools and our neighborhoods and not just downtown. Um, I am well equipped for this job. I've been a city councilman. I've served as the mayor pro tem. I've chaired the finance committee. I'm a current member of the finance committee with the city of Clarksville. I've been a county commissioner. I've served as eight years as the parliamentarian for the Montgomery County Republican Party. I know how to chair a meeting. I chaired the largest committee that the city has ever had. It was the charter revision committee where we had to go over the entire code and, and the entire charter. And we brought that as a result to the, the city council and, and we do now have an updated charter. I've also passed many ethics reforms on the city council. Some are dealt, are dubbed the red rule. That is, uh, whenever a zoning case comes up, members of the community that are against it, they will come in and fight it, and it would fail. And then the very next month, the same zoning case would come back and back until it passed. But I wrote and passed the rule that says if something fails, it takes one year before you can bring it back again. I called it churning in order to 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 get their votes to pass. And um, I've been the pastor of Sugar Creek Baptist Church for the last eight years. And I just would like to say that uh, um, I'm married to Helga Red again for the last 42 years. We've got three children and five grandchildren. And unfortunately, they don't live here, so they can't vote for me. But I would say for all of you that live in Montgomery County, I would appreciate your vote. I would be humbled to have your vote and feel free to contact me anytime at 931-216-5640. Thank you. All right. Thank you both um, for being here and thank you both for running. Um, it's important for our democracy to have people who are willing to run for offices like this. And you both have put, thrown your hat in the ring and made a bold statement by doing it. And we really appreciate it, um, all the voters and the community. It's an honor. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.